Well, Snapchat, I'm so ridiculously tired. I think the lack of sun for five days has not helped. Um, so I'm trying to get as much as possible today. Um, let's talk about the future of our economic system and our new political system we're moving into. So have you ever come across this argument where people are like, okay, what's going to happen post-capitalism? Everyone's dismayed with capitalism, we're over it. You know, the rich are getting richer, the poor are getting poorer. And everyone's like, what's next? What's the next big thing? The problem is I tend to notice that any idea that comes out as to what's going to be post-capitalism always immediately gets boxed into like, oh, that's socialism, or that's communism, or that's whatever. And because we have a different level for every type of political ideology and economic system ideology, um, every idea always gets boxed into one of those. And so it's either a negative or a positive. I kind of prefer to look at um, all of these economic systems we've gone through, you know, like socialism, capitalism, communism, all these systems, as kind of the same evolving algorithm of trying to organize people in a, in a certain way. And so if you look at them all as like the same type of evolving algorithm, then you don't have to put them in competition with each other, and you don't have to have bias, and you don't have to label it, and you don't have to like pick a side. They're all the same thing, and you can learn from all of them. And so when people say like, what is the next system after post, like after capitalism, post-capitalism, it's not going to be socialism, it's not going to be communism, it's not going to be libertarianism, it's going to be a mixture of everything. And we'll probably need a cool new name for it. So let's paint a picture of the future vision of what everything's going to end up being and how it relates to all the previous economic systems. Let's go. So it's the early 2030s and everyone has a universal basic income. You know, 20, 30, possibly even 40 grand a year. So all our basic needs are met. That's socialism. That's the best of socialism, the safety net. But we also live in a post-scarcity world where, where robots are essentially making every good we possibly need at the lowest possible price ever. That's communism. Because <laughs> it's providing free goods really cheaply to the masses. We also live in a world where the blockchain basically rules. I mean, we are we all live in this peer-to-peer -peer economy where everyone can transact with each other regardless of it. We don't need a bank in the middle, you don't need governments, and that's libertarianism. More blockchains, smart contracts, and DAOs running the world means less government, so that keeps the conservatives happy, and it also means it, it encourages more of a free market because it's like an open system, so yeah. In this peer-to-peer -peer world with everyone with a basic income, that also keeps the liberals happy because everyone has freedom of speech, uh, everyone is individual, and can do their own thing without being discriminated against. And finally, capitalism will still have a play. I mean, we'll still have startups and entrepreneurship. That's what drives innovation. And so there'll still be a profit motive. It might be a little bit more social leaning, like social entrepreneurship, but it's still there. So it's still got that. So there you go. No one has to fucking fight. Like, all these systems all work together. They're all the exact same thing. They have good bits, they have bad bits. But we can take the best of all of them and create something better. You could probably call this like a utopian system, but uto the word utopia just means perfect. There's a better word, protopia. It means always striving to become better to get towards a utopia. So, for lack of a better word, maybe we can call this new economic system protopianism. Maybe. Snappy thoughts, our future. Have a great day, guys.